So now that we've had a first look at matrices, let's actually get into the formal definition of a matrix. So a matrix is simply a rectangular array of numbers, of numbers. And these numbers are sometimes called entries or elements. You can refer to them as either an entry or an element. And we can use matrices to represent systems of linear equations in a simplified way, right? We don't have to write all the plus signs, the minus signs, the equal signs when we're doing something like converting a system of linear equations into an equivalent system of linear equations using row echelon form and elementary row operations, right? So let's actually start by looking at the general system of linear equations, the definition for a general system of linear equations, right? So the general system of linear equations would look something like this. We would have some coefficient a11 times an unknown variable x1 plus another coefficient a12 times another unknown variable x2 and this would go on and on, right? And we could go all the way up to a1m times some unknown variable xm and that's equal to b1. And m is simply any real positive number, right? So m could be 40. So in this equation, we would have 40 different terms. If m was 1 billion, this equation would have 1 billion terms. And so another equation could be a21 times some unknown variable x1 plus a22 times x2 plus on and on and on plus a2m times xm is equal to b2, some constant term on the right-hand side, right? And we could keep writing these equations all the way up to a n1 times x1 plus a n2 times x2 plus on and on and on plus a n m uh, times x m is equal to b n. And n right here is also any real positive number. So this system of linear equations could have an n number of equations. So if n was 100, we would have 100 equations. If n was 1 trillion, we would have 1 trillion equations. And n and m really represent the size of this system of linear equations or the size of the matrix that we can write this system of linear equations in. So sometimes we like to say that a matrix is n times m size. So it's an n by m size. So it has n number of rows and m number of columns. So our unknowns in this system of linear equations are x1, x2, x3, all the way to x M. And our known coefficients are all the coefficient terms of the unknown variables. So we have a11, a21, all the way up to a n1, a12, a22, all the way up to n, a n2, a1 m, a2 m, a n m, and so on and so forth, right? Well, there's a lot of those coefficients, right? There's a lot of those known numbers. So we like to call them a, i, j. And i is simply a row subscript. And j is simply a column subscript. And i and j are called indices. So if the index i equaled two and j equaled one, this would refer to a21, which is this term, this coefficient right here, right? So that's simple enough. So we can actually write this system of linear equations, this general system of linear equations in augmented matrix form. And remember, augmented matrix form is simply taking all the coefficients on the left-hand side and all of the constant terms of the right-hand side and writing them in a rectangular array. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and I'm going to rewrite the general system of linear equations here. And we can go ahead and proceed with writing the augmented matrix for this general system of linear equations. So remember, we wanna look at all the coefficients on the left-hand side and then all the constant terms on the right-hand side for this augmented matrix. 
So we'll start off with A11 here. We'll write A11 and then we'll write A21. And I need a little bit more room, so I'm going to scroll down. And then we'll have A31 and we'll go all the way up to a n1, which is this term right here, right? This coefficient, sorry. And in the second column, we'll start off with a12, then we'll have a22, right? Then we'll have a32, and then we'll go all the way to a n2, which is this coefficient right here. And we can keep doing this a13, a23, a33, all the way up to a n3, and we can keep doing this for all the columns, right? So this would go all the way up to a 1m, which is this coefficient right there. And in the second row, we'll go up to a 2m, and then we'll go to a 3m, and this will continue on up to a nm. And remember the constants on the right-hand side were b1, b2, B3 all the way up to Bn. So we'll draw our square brackets around this array of numbers. And I like to include this little vertical dashed line so I know that so that the column on the right side of that dashed line refers to all the constants and everything on the left refers to all the coefficients. So this is our augmented matrix. Now the coefficient matrix, remember, is simply the augmented matrix without the right-hand side constant. So it's only the coefficients, and we call that our coefficient matrix. So if I scroll down a little bit here and write the coefficient matrix, well, the coefficient matrix would just be A11, A21, A31, all the way up to AN1, A12, A22, A32, all the way up to a n2, a 1 3, a 2 3, a 3 3, all the way up to a n3. And this would go on and on all the way to a 1 m, a 2 m, a 3 m, and this would continue to a n m. So this right here would be our coefficient matrix, right? It doesn't include that column right there. So let's finish off with a few definitions. We'll start off with the definition real matrix. And a real mat matrix just means that every element inside a matrix is a real number, right? So if a matrix had elements that were imaginary, the I numbers, then that matrix would be called a complex matrix. And finally, if N equaled m, which really means the number of rows equaled the number of columns, then we call that matrix a square matrix. And that the terms a11, a22, a33, all the way up to a n m are called the main diagonal elements.